I want to talk today about solubility of compounds in organic chemistry. And when we're considering solubility in organic chemistry, and any solubility, we need to consider intermolecular forces. And we're going to divide our intermolecular forces into two different categories. Look at polar intermolecular forces, things like ionic interactions, whether it be ion-ion or ion-dipole, hydrogen bonding, and dipole-dipole interactions. And then we're also going to look at nonpolar intermolecular forces. And generally, when we're speaking of nonpolar intermolecular forces, we're talking about London dispersion forces, which um, we're going to term LDF. And the key to understanding intermolecular forces relationship to solubility is the very short phrase, like dissolves like. And what that means is that solutes with um, polar interaction, polar intermolecular forces will dissolve in solvents with polar intermolecular forces. And likewise, um, solutes with nonpolar intermolecular forces will dissolve in solvents with nonpolar intermolecular forces, but you won't get crossing over. Something that has primarily polar intermolecular forces won't dissolve in something that is primarily nonpolar. Now, I'm not going to talk about the nature of hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole or ionic or London dispersion forces. That's the topic of another conversation. We're just going to talk about how we can use them and recognize them to analyze our solubilities. So let's look at a molecule that's polar and a molecule that's nonpolar. For example of a polar molecule, we'll look at water, and the nonpolar molecule will use hexane. Now, when we're analyzing the intermolecular forces present in these molecules, starting with water, we primarily focus on the H bonding. It's the most important intermolecular force for water. You have a hydrogen on this oxygen. It can hydrogen bond with other water molecules or other polar groups. Um, but it is true that there, even though it's the most important and we focus on that, there is dipole-dipole interactions that are present as well. But we focus primarily on the strongest one, which is dipole, di I mean hydrogen bonding. For the hexane, it's a nonpolar molecule. We don't have any polar bonds. We have LDF, London dispersion forces. Now, based on our like dissolves like rule, we would not expect water and hexane to dissolve in one another. And if we look at the solubility of hexane in water, it's very sparingly soluble. The maximum solubility of 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth molar in H2O. That's basically non soluble. And that's because like dissolves like, and these are not like intermolecular forces. If I look at this molecule, methanol, it definitely has hydrogen bonding and dipole dipole interactions, and it has a tiny little hydrophobic group, but not very much. This is definitely going to be water soluble. And we find that this is miscible in water. It dissolves in any rate. In fact, for both ethanol with two carbons and propanol for three carbons, both of these are miscible in water as well because the hydrogen bonding interactions between this and this, water and these hydroxide groups, are, or hydroxyl groups, are so um, the alcohol groups are so strong that it overwhelms any influence that we might get from the LDF on these carbon chains. However, if we go one carbon longer to um, one butanol, we sort of have two regions in this molecule. We have the region around the OH, which is polar, can undergo H bonding and dipole-dipole interactions. Remember, the H bonding is the most important one, though. And then it has this other region over here with all of these carbons and hydrogens that's nonpolar. Nonpolar region starts to be enough to prevent this molecule from dissolving completely in water. It makes it nonpolar enough to hinder the solubility. And the solubility of one butanol in water is 79 grams per liter. Extending the nonpolar region more by making this hexanol with six carbons here, reduces its solubility in water even more. So hexanol is only soluble at six grams per liter. We might expect, however, that hexanol would be soluble in hexane because this hydrophobic region is substantial enough 
to interact with this hydrophobic region, and it's probably fairly soluble in hexane. I want to talk a little bit very briefly about the effect of branching on solubility also. So I want to look at this molecule. It's T-butanol. It has four carbons in the alcohol, just like this has four carbons in the alcohol. They're structural isomers of one another. They have the same formula. This one, as we said, is 79 point grams per liter soluble in water. This one, the branched one, is miscible in water. Again, meaning it's soluble in any proportion. So the more branching you have of your hydrophobic region, the more soluble it is in water. It's kind of like we're taking our hydrophobic region and bunching it up into a small area so that it doesn't interfere with the water interacting with this OH as much as if it were spread out. So branching increases solubility in water for hydrophobic molecules. I also want to talk about molecules that sort of have regions of mixed polarity similar to what I did down here, but in a little more detail. And for that, I want to look at benzoic acid. If we focus on benzoic acid, we've got a polar region over here in this carboxylic acid portion. So this is polar H bonding and dipole dipole. And we've got a nonpolar region over here. And the nonpolar region primarily undergoes London dispersion forces. A molecule like this that's got polar and nonpolar regions, we say it has mixed polarity. And in this particular case, the nonpolar region is particularly large, this big benzene ring. So we might expect that this would not be very soluble in a polar solvent like water. And the water solubility of this molecule is very sparing at room temperature. It goes up when you heat it, but um, at room temperature, 2.9 grams per liter. We might consider trying to dissolve benzene in a nonpolar solvent because of this nonpolar region. But remember, it will also have this polar region. It's going to hinder it dissolving in a nonpolar solvent. And the nonpolar solvent we could, consider, we could consider would be something like cyclohexane. And if we consider the solubility of hexane, uh, benzoic acid in the nonpolar cyclohexane, we get bit more soluble, 12 grams per liter, but still not a lot. In order to dissolve a solvent like a solute like benzene, we're going to need a, a solvent that has mixed polarity just like benzene does. It has to have some polar regions and some nonpolar regions. Really good choice is diethyl ether. You've got the CH2CH3 and the CH2CH3, which is um, nonpolar has LDF, and you have this oxygen carbon bond that has um, dipole dipole interactions. And we might expect this to be a really good solvent for benzoic acid, and it is. I looked this up in the internet, and I'm not sure I believe the number that I read, but it says that it dissolves to 400 grams per liter, which is a huge amount of benzoic acid dissolved in diethyl ether. Now, even if it isn't that much, it's still substantial. It's going to be a high amount of benzoic acid dissolved in diethyl ether because this is mixed polarity and this is also mixed polarity. It has groups that can interact with the benzene ring and it has groups that can interact with the uh, dipole-dipole interactions over here.